Can you remember the first uh, person that R.I.P. from your neighborhood during your generation? Bobo. Uh, DeAndre. What was his last name? But anyway, DeAndre. That was the first one. And I believe at that time we was maybe 17, 16, 17. And what was going through my mind at that time is what we about to do. Like, where is that? What we about to do? Who did it? Basically, Diamond's gonna stop right there with that thought. <laughs> At some point, you get involved in a, you start what becomes a long-term relationship. Yes. With my kids, dad, I was 19. And I, when I think about this relationship, although it, it ended up tumultuous. Correct. It possibly could have saved your life. I believe it did. <laughs> I really believe it did. I mean, thinking about him and how lack of involvement he is with his kids and I'm doing everything by myself. It's, um, it really did because I went from, <laughs> I went from game banging to being pregnant and becoming not active anymore to where I didn't want anything to happen to my daughter. Well, I didn't know if she was a girl or boy at the time, but yeah, so it was more leaving from here and moving with him. And I believe, I really believe I was gonna either be in a pen or I was gonna be dead. If, if I had not changed it, period. That's not a doubt in my mind. That's not a, I think, that's a for sure. I was 19. My kid's dad is like an OG from Jarvis. They don't claim Anthens, but they're in the Anthens neighborhood, of course. And uh, his name, I don't even know if I even want to say his name. I don't even think I want to even tell who, give him no shine. Um, started a relationship with him. I was 19, he was 42. Yeah. And I was with him for 11 years, not off and on. I was with him for 11 years consistently. And I have three kids by him, my only three kids that I have by him. And it was from 19 to 30 years old. And 30 years old, I say maybe two, three weeks after my 30th birthday, I left. I was done. I left and never been back. Whatever I was searching for at that time, he, uh, he provided it. I mean, my dad had passed away when I was 12. I did not have any male role, mo role model figures in my family. N no uncles, no, no, nobody that was talking to me. So, I mean, people talk a lot about um, young girls being with older men is because of lack of father figure. I believe that has a lot of substance to it, and I believe it had something to do with my decision. So, I mean, he did the right things per se, you know what I mean? Um, he didn't pressure me to have sex or nothing like that. It was more of a friend thing for at least about six, seven months where I was able to go out with him at night, well, 18 at the time, and be able to get into clubs that are 21 and over. And I thought I was a shit because I was in a club with the older people and my friends couldn't get in, but I can get in because I was with him. It's all a mind game. It's a, sed a seduction, seducing, I think, I don't know. So some people might say he probably preyed on you. How do you, do you see any truth to that? I see that now. I think so. I think what the hell do a 42-year-old ass man have in common with a 19-year-old badass girl? So, I mean, any adult man, just my opinion now, any adult man wouldn't even want to get with a kid because I don't have nothing to offer but sex and conversation, barely conversation, because um, I haven't been on this planet long enough to be able to articulate in depth thoroughly about what you're talking about because you've been here 40 some years. So, yeah, I would think, yeah, yeah. Uh, was he aware that you were from Athens Park and what was his Of role? course, he was aware of everything. He pulled up in his parking lot many a times. He didn't see me coming back with brownies on, coming from a mission. He seen all that. When none of that uh, in a closet, all that was highly aware of. So was his plan to get you kind of uh, away from that? This possible. It's really possible. If it was his plan, he did do it. 
so I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that because like I said, I, I believe I was headed for self-destruction. In my mind at that time, it was going absolutely the business. You know, I have a kid. I live with my baby daddy. I don't have no baby daddy issues. I'm not keying up cars. I'm not getting beat up. You know, he not talking shit. I mean, it's picture perfect from my environment. So it didn't go haywire until maybe like the last two years before I left. What were some of your friends saying that, oh, we haven't seen Boo Boo. Oh, she got pregnant. Oh, she's living with such and such. Did they kind of like miss you? from hanging out or did they just embrace your transition? They embraced it. They embraced it with jokes. I mean, they had their little side jokes, little sidebars or whatever, but they, for the most part, embraced it. Because when I came around, it was like, you know, let's pick back up, not with the activity, but, you know, I mean, I'm an aggressive person, so you're not gonna talk shit. Did you miss some of the street shit immediately when you got pregnant and started becoming a mother? No. I didn't miss it. I was more intrigued with me having a baby and the baby kicking and I'm able to sit home and not have to worry about anything and watch TV. You know, it was, I don't have to get up and I'm not slanging, people not texting, well not texting, but people not uh, paging me. And no, it was like a relief. I think it kind of took people by surprise, like you having a baby by him? And they all know him. They all grew up with him. So it's one of the things like, Okay, but I didn't get no negative, really too much none. I, I mean, people said certain things here and there, like, boo-boo, really? Like him? And I'm like, yeah, so. Were they saying, were they, were they giving you the side eye because of the age difference or because of just his, his character? His character and the age difference. How old were you when you had your second child? And I believe Bozy, I was what, um, 23? Like, 20, 21, 22. 22. 22 with Bozy. All right, so he's just, he's just uh, keeping you home pregnant. <laughs> back to back, basically. Yeah, because uh, my kids, the older two, are only 16 months apart. So, yeah. But I was okay with it. I was working. You know, I was able to give me a job and work. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't like sitting around the house asking nobody to do nothing for me. So it was after my daughter was born. I went to school and got my medical assistant, then I started working in that field, and then my son came along and I still was working. I mean, from basically from 14 until now, I've been working, like, you know, back in the day when you had your summer jobs. I've been having a summer job since about 14, 15 years old every summer. So working was not something that I didn't do. Working was actually something I used to like, do I need my own money? On top of whatever I was making in the parking lot. I believe after the two kids and I got within my, well after my baby boy, and I got within my mid to late 20s, I started to see myself and went from uh, jeans and t-shirt to dressing up, seeing myself. And I believe that's when it started issues with me maturing, basically. And he wanted to keep me in that box and be just that person and I was starting to see myself and I guess you wanted to do things that you didn't get an opportunity to do yeah like this bike <laughs> like this bike <laughs> yeah um, I always talked about me wanting a bike a motorcycle I've been saying that forever and when I was with him I got my motorcycle license um, but I didn't get a bike it was like every time we spoke about that it was a negative vibe from him pertaining to me getting a bike. But the thought in my mind is you've been there, you've done that, you've already had a bike before. What's the issue with me getting a bike? But now hindsight looking at it is maybe he knew that it was gonna open doors for me being around other type of people. And I think that was the whole back of hating on me getting a bike and it's always been a negative response to it. So yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, outgrew the uh, original situation and start to form into my own person. I've been wanting me a bike mm, before I got her. That's puss. Before I got her, it was probably about eight years. About eight years. So I guess this is one of the first things you decided to start doing when you uh, moved out? No, I've been gone from him seven years. Okay. So it took me a while, you know what I'm saying, to get my life together, get in school, you know, instead of spending money on a bike, you know, uh, more so different things I do pertaining to with the kids. So basically this year, beginning of this year, I made it happen. And there she go. 
And uh, how does it feel uh, riding, riding that bike? Oh my God, it feels like I'm high. It feels <laughs> like, thank you. It feels like, can't nothing stop me but a car pulling out in front of me. That's the only thing. I mean, that's my getaway. That's my woo side. That's my, that's my other me. I mean, you have to think about it. I'm with someone from 19 to 30, and my kids are three years old, eight years old, and nine years old. And they're seeing their mom break the relationship up. They're seeing the mom separating and leaving, and it's not, I can't blame, oh, your daddy left us. You know what I'm saying? They're seeing mama doing this, where they have their own backyard. You know, we in the house, they doing them. They live in their life. To me moving, and shortly after, it only took me like a month, nine days from the initial day that I left him. It took me a month, nine days to get my own apartment. And then now we're in a hamster cage. You know, so it was, it was, that was like, that was like the hardest thing ever to me. Because what I did notice is my daughter was mad for years behind that. And she's seen, mom, it's your fault that we're not with daddy. And I had to live through that because I know she's too young to put it into perspective what was really going on. But my thing is, this is a toxic situation. I'm done. All right, so uh, someone, young lady in her 20s is, is stuck in a relationship for 10 years. She knows she wants to leave it, but she don't know how to start the process. What do you tell her? Uh, what do your spirit say to you? Figure out what it is that your spirit say to you and reach out to people. I mean, we have this thing in our community that we don't want to tell nobody what's really going on. Stop that shit. I mean, of course, uh, raggedy people, you don't talk to them. What I mean by raggedy people, people that run and tell that. Find somebody, go to a church, talk to a pastor's wife. Um, go to a school, walk up on the school, start just talk to somebody of substance. You cannot talk to somebody that's just as stupid as you and think that you're gonna get a good conclusion. Talk to somebody. Do research. Research, what is the statistics of uh, the gang banging life? How many young women is dead? How many of them is in the penitentiary? Um, I don't know, think it out, think it out. And the stronger people are the ones that don't do the trend. The weakest people do monkey see, monkey do. And I wanted to say as well, for the OG women, or the women of my caliber as far as in their 30s or what have you, get at Alonzo. As you ladies know, we're the one that bear the kids, we take care of these kids. There's some women out there that been gang banging and had babies in the penitentiary. I mean, come to Alonzo, tell your story. We gotta get our side out there because, I mean, we a big major factor in this gang banging world as in this, in this world, period. Tell your story. You know, if you feel like, you know, I really don't want to tell my story, I don't want people to judge me, I've been there, I've done that, and I'm trying to live my life and put that behind me, I understand. But you making help me help some of these young girls to not go down the same road that we did and waste time like that. Get at Alonzo. We want to hear your story too, I do. You listening to mine, I want to hear yours. Holler at me, Mama Boo, 132, on Instagram. Finally, uh. Motorcycle riding is not something that a lot of women do, but I'm sure there's a lot of women that see it and say, hmm, I'd love to try that. I'm right, like, holler at me. Um, Get at me <laughs> on Instagram. Any independent riders, holler at me. I mean, whether you have a bike or you're thinking about getting a bike or you got a bike and you just don't ride with nobody, you just ride to work or you ride here and there with your boyfriend, your brother, your uncle, holler at me, okay? Let's start a movement. Let's get it popping. Holler at me. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.